Okie dokie, folkies. So, what I have here is a bit of a treat for you and the start of something beautiful. Horus Heresy Book 1 Betrayal. Horus Heresy Book 2 Massacre. What's that? Massacre? How have you got Massacre? You didn't go to Games Day? No, I didn't. However, I'm very, very lucky that my friend Paul, who has a YouTube channel of Elster Nation, and I will put the link below because you need to go and check his stuff out, it's amazing, um, picked this up for me at Games Day. Along with this, he picked up a few others. This guy ended up walking around Games Day with five copies of this book. And it's a big, heavy book, so, you know, it's not a workout for the day. Because uh, he had a group of friends that weren't interested in heresy, so they got them for him, and he's brought them back for those of us going to the Siege of Terror that uh, couldn't make it to Games Day. So please go and check out his channel. He plays Night Lords like I do. He goes for some amazing paint jobs with the lightning work on his tank, and he's currently putting a Titan together to join me at the Siege of Terror for Templar's Crusado 1's big... Uh, um, well, end of his big campaign. So, Elster Nation, check the link. Dude is legendary. And on to looking at the book. Same thickness, still has the gilded cover, the lovely bookmark, the silver edges. And let's take a look inside. So this book picks up where the first book leaves off. So the purging of the original four traitor legions has happened on Istvan 3. And we are now on Istvan 5. So the artwork in here is glorious. So the book kicks off with a quick review of the Crusade, the crowning of the War Master, and events leading up to this book. And has this lovely little table of the final years and the final major battles. And then we're into the infamous drop site massacre of Istvan 5. So, all the backstory, the intelligence that was gathered, Ferris Manus leading on the Ferrum, the fleets of the Salamanders, of the Raven Guard, all coming in. First drop wave, the original attack pattern. Oh, it was absolutely beautiful book. The Titans, Legions, all of their original drop sites, the Vanguard attacking through the earthworks in the basin up to the fortress. Beautiful artwork again, and we're telling the story now of the second drop from the Iron Warriors, the Word Bearers, the Night Lords and the Alpha Legion, that, the, that they're originally are thought to be loyalists, and then when they turn traitor and just surround and oh, absolutely destroy, absolutely destroy them in the massacre. So we go through here with some lovely, lovely artwork for the Mechanicum Thalanx. A lot of the artwork in this book, for, particularly for characters, are these pencil drawings, and they're just gorgeous, absolutely lovely. So here we have the digital artwork for the Mechanicum Thalanx, and now we have some extra shiny bits of background for the Legions. So bits about the Death Shroud for the Death Guard, and some examples of their tanks. The Empress Children Terminators, tanks. The Justerian, tanks. World Eaters, tanks. Then we're done with the original four legions from the book one. And we come into our new legions. So we start with the Iron Hands. And we have their lore, their background, all of their fluff. Details on the clans, on the battles, the inheritance of Medusa, how the legion itself is organised. Then we get the artwork that comes with... The Iron Hands, Terminators, Breacher Squads, Dreadnoughts, all absolutely phenomenal. And into their tanks. All absolutely stunning, this book. It's beautiful. Talking of their exemplary battles. My Legion, the Night Lords. Again complete run back of their back history. The origins of Conrad Kurz, of the Legion, uh, originally were from Terran penal colonies, then from Nostramo, and then our digital artwork. Contemptors, 
with all of the trophies strewn across them. They just they just look beautiful. Uh, talk of our legion and its fall, the unit formation and structure, the command hierarchy, tanks showing that they all have these sigils of death all over them. Our terminators, and I'm so happy with my terminators because they look like this. You know, the paint scheme's pretty much perfect. I've got the lightning claws on them. The only thing I don't have are these Legion identifiers on the knee pads, but you know, the chains, the everything. I'm so happy. Tactical support marine, indicated by apparently the white helmet and white um, chest guard. So I might do a, a squad or two of those. Night Lord's named squads. See here the Horus have the Reavers, um, the Word Bearers have the Rampages. We have Terror squads. Ten man squads that just go in, so dissent and discord. And we are the Legion that can have the ten man squad with a heavy weapon in. Or either a flamer or a rotor cannon. Kind of like in 40k. Assault squads, veterans, tanks. Storm Eagles, and as you know, I've got a few of those. And our exemplary battles, some talk of our law, and then we're into the Sallies. Salamanders, much of a muchness again, all of our background, all of our law, or our law, their law. Formation and structure within the Legion, talk of the Promethean cults, the regions of Nocturne, and then the Legionaries themselves. Absolutely gorgeous bits and again overlaid with lots of drake scale which my friend Kev Case has done with his legionnaires and they look fantastic so tactical legionnaires with fire across them general identifiers Sally's Thunderhawk black and green looks absolutely beautiful all the artwork in here and then onto the exemplary battles to detail some of their great heroicism Word bearers, bet you can never guess what's coming next. Background, fluff, okay. How they're organized, how they're structured. And here we have them in their new colors for the massacre. The red of the betrayal. Some of them still have the gray, the gray slates, but you can see all the runes that are carved across, even on the all um, apothecaries. They're just fantastic. Again, vehicles. Exemplary battles, tanks, dreadnoughts, Titan Legion, Legio Ataris, so to oppose the traitor Legion of Mortis. And then we come into the rules section. So how to fight battles in apocalyptic scales, rules for using super heavies, primarchs, rules to use formations of flyers as, as super heavy detachments. New force organization charts, so you can make a slightly different story with them, which is pretty cool. And then the actual campaign section for the campaign rules. How to run it as a campaign, how to fight all of the battles, all of the different armies, the campaign map, missions that you can play. Going through all of this lot. And then the actual army lists and upgrades. So this is to be used alongside the generic army list from the first book. So, the Legion of Astartes rules, Battlesmith, Primarch and so on as a refresher. And then we have generic stuff that anyone can use. The Legion Mortis Dreadnought, the Legion Contemptor Mortis. So that's brought back in. The Helical Target Array can get Skyfire on Mortises again now. Which is brilliant. That was a big, big thing that was missing from the first Heresy book. Gun batteries, tarantula sentry guns, which you can upgrade to, you know, the, the various anti-air things. Which is not fun for me with my flying army. Primaris lightning strike fighters, so you can take um, fighter jets as a support thing. That's absolutely brilliant. The javelin attack speeder, beautiful models. Deathstorm drop pods, Ooh, knocking my thing there. The Legion Whirlwind, the Legion Sikharan, which is a beautiful model. The Dreadnought drop pod is back and can take Contemptors. The Legion Glaive, the super heavy Bane Blade with the Volkite uh, weapon on the top. All in here for generic use. Then we're back to specific Legion stuff. So, an extra bit for the Sons of Horus. And their Reaver attack squad. 
with these pencil drawings. Malagurst the Twisted, which you've all heard of, the Equerry of the Warmaster, is a character now. World Eaters, Extra Rules, their squad, the Red Butchers of Terminators, Khan, as in Khan the Betrayer, as rules. Empress Children for their uh, rights of war and their extra rules. The Phoenix Terminators, Lord Commander Eidolon, and this is amazing Cacophony Noise Marines, the original Noise Marines. The models look amazing, they are just absolutely fantastic. Um, and their rules are here. Death Guard, again, generic rules. Grave Warden Terminators. Callus Typhon as his rules. And then we're into the new legions. Iron Hands, their rules, their rights of war, everything that applies to them. Gorgon Terminators, Medusa Immortals, Ferris Manus as his rules. Uh, a Spearhead Centurion character, cast him an Orth, Iron Father Orchek Moor, and then the Night Lords. Our rules, our lights of war, our specific weapons that we can use, and our rules for our squads, our terror squads, the original Night Lords Raptor squads. Conrad Kurz, the Night Haunter himself, has some amazing rules. He is absolutely beautiful. And if his model looks even half as sinister and as brooding as this pencil sketch of him, I am just going to be over the moon. The other thing that I like about Kurz, and I'm going to harp on about Kurz for a minute, his weapons, his lightning claws, are apparently mercy and forgiveness. I mean, who? Conrad Kurz, mercy, forgiveness, uh, I don't think so. Uh, new characters, the Flame Aster, so a bit of a messed up apothecary. Sevatar, we have rules for Jago Sevatarian. Absolutely brilliant. Sally's Salamanders, their rules, their rights of war, Pyroclast squads, Fire Drake Terminators, Vulcan is huge and his rules are amazing. And again, characters Cassian Dracos, Lord Chaplain Raitan, or however they pronounce that one. Word bearers, all of their rules. Dark Brethren. The Ashen Circle, the Word Bearer's Legion. High Chaplain Erebus and Corpheron. I don't know if you've seen these models, but they are amazing. Absolutely amazing. And Lorgar himself. Again, his model has been seen. It is absolutely fantastic. You can also have two versions of Lorgar. His original rules here have him um, where his psychic powers aren't fully developed, he's not yet embraced chaos completely, but for an extra 75 points you can upgrade him to Lorgar Transfigured and have him as a level 3 psyker who may select rather than randomly roll three powers in any combination from telepathy and telekinesis. And he rolls 3d6 and picks the two lowest results for his tests. It's amazing. Legio Cybernetica so if you want to do a Mechanicum army now, we have full rules and everything for there. All of their weapons, extra things that they can do with um, vehicles. So your uh, commanders, your elites, your troops. And all of these models are coming soon and they will be amazing. Support wings, destructors, and then the usual appendix for battles, for weapons, for super heavies templates and the afterword. This basically guys is totally totally worth the £75 for the book along with the first heresy book. This is an amazing series and I'm so so happy that I've got this. Thank you for watching me harp on, folks. Again, as I said, please go and check out uh, my friend Paul Elster Nation, who was absolutely fantastic in getting this book for me. His stuff is absolutely beautiful. And as I said, he's joining me at the Siege of Terror as Malkarian the War Sage. Stay safe, folks. Have fun. And I will see you all soon. Bye.